It turns out Tony does occasionally make useful contributions. Ooh, new coil. Let's get to work. How does this look? Ready to work? I think we've got something for everyone. Haha, <laughs> nothing's gonna stop me now. I know magic, right? <laughs> now I see what all the fuss is. What's new, Hunter? Beginning decryption system. Well, this was educational, in a terrible way. Okay, what's Hydra up to now? And Hydra rears its ugly head. One of them, anyway. Great. Now we're making progress, people. Like a bad guy. Any bad guy. Just because there is talk of a slime monster lurking beneath Manhattan does not mean... Oh, it does. Look, I know Eddie and Venom. They're not what you'd call unsore losers. And we did, you know, kind of bury them under an old bell tower. Has anyone seen the creature since? Long gone by the time S.H.I.E.L.D. showed up. They go to ground when you wound their pride. In this case, underground. Venom on the loose. Licking his wounds. Now that's a friendly neighborhood problem. So, how about we go solve it? Do you have a question? <sighs> you gotta work on your social cues.
worried that Venom will hold a grudge. I would say. Don't expect it. You still think this is a good idea? Yeah. Eddie tries to be a savior, but sometimes I'm not. Our slime monster. Vampire. Ah, uh, vampires. Maybe it's the Downtown Express? Sounds like a lair. Sounds like. A vamp over easy. Not so easy for the vamp. Oh, gross, Eddie. It's hard to know who to root for in these parasite versus parasite situations. Parasite? A demonically possessed symbiote? With a vampire's bloodlust. Not good. Come on, Eddie, don't do this. They are definitely doing this. <laughs> Should have known that thing would crawl back to the sewers once Lilith had no use for it. No use for Lilith. We don't need her. Tell yourself whatever you have to. Uh, not to interrupt, but have you really been eating those vampires, Eddie. The rarest meat of all. If you are what you eat, what does that make you? Stronger than it looks. Otherwise, you're in trouble. want me out of the picture. This is 
slow even for you, Eddie. Moping in the sewer. <laughs> Not lost. cannot be broken. But were they really as bad as this? Your mother abandoned. Lost. 
One mercy remains. Ah, yes. The elimination of one tormented soul for the good of many. Humans do love a moral dilemma. The umami of an otherwise flavorless existence. Mephisto. Gesundheit. Uh, nice mullet. Go to hell. There's nowhere I would rather be, but I've come on business. So let's make a deal. Is this one of those fiddle at the crossroads scenarios, or? No deal. My terms are as follows. I spare venom. I cure the symbiote of Lilith's demonic touch. I end the blood fever he's given himself, gorging on curdled vampire bile. I wretch a little thinking of it. I said, no deal. All this, and I ask but one inconsequential thing in return. Stop the vampire uprising. The undead are bad for business. So you cure Eddie and we keep doing what we've been doing? Yes. Wipe them out. Remove every trace of their foul scourge from the earth. Then I will cure this pathetic creature forever. For the last time, no. Hold up. Give me the fine print. Nothing much. The usual. If you should fail, you'll discover something far more threatening than the undead, namely yours truly, etc., etc., immortal soul, yada yada. This is a bad idea. This or he dies? We don't have much of a choice. I'm in. Good. Just sign there and there. You may feel a little steep. We should follow. You do have a vampire war to wage. Oh, and Peter, I'll see you around. How did he know my... Huh. <laughs> of all the surprises we've had so far, that was one of the weirdest. So, uh, that's a truce then, right, Eddie? We feel like ourselves again. We could, but ourselves. We will spare you. Hey, that's progress. He didn't threaten to eat you. That is progress. Much appreciated.
Ray told me to mention your mother. Apparently, she's promiscuous. Vampires have little sense of self-preservation. Facing this. Nap, but maybe a hot shower is in order? You spend a lot of time in the sewers. Right, I'm feeling it.
It must be tough losing all the time. For like... decades. I think that's the last of them, and not a moment too soon. Something like that. So, you okay, Eddie? Blood! <laughs> it's kidding, little joke. Uh, no, I, I come in peace. For once. Really? New kids gotta get in on this, too? Hey, by the way, you're killing it out there. Respect. Thank you. Not my first vampire war. Eddie, are you yourself again? Well, you mean, are we ourselves? Yeah, Lilith. She made us a monster. We did awful things. You know that's not who we are, right? Of course. So I'm sitting here. Well, in there. And thinking. <clears throat> I saw what you did for me. So, how about we put aside all our, uh, you know, personal stuff? Okay. No, not forever. Just, just until this whole messed up vampire situation is figured out till all the innocent people are safe. I mean, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Works for me. Shake on it. Oh. Huh. Wait a sec. Put her there, partner. I'm there, partner. Welcome to the Midnight Suns. Time for book club. You coming? Meet you there. I'll walk you. I like this book, but I can't explain why. Maybe I'll figure it out as we discuss it. Everyone's in a mood to mingle. Go ahead. We can start whenever. I should not be this nervous about what you all thought of the book. Even the best translations from Cree lose subtext. Let's get this started. I am ready. Carol, this was your book, so you can start. I'll throw it back to you. What did you think of the book? I had a rough time with it. You didn't like it? Didn't say that. At first, I've spent more time referencing the glossary than reading the book. Sounds familiar. What changed? I noticed a kind of rhythm to the words. I began to see them as lyrics to a song. All that dry talk faded and it finally came together. The lyrics made it feel much bigger than a chapter on Cree farming implements. This book was about much more than farming. Exactly. The rhythm to it helped paint a bigger picture. 
Once I caught on, I kept reading and didn't rely on the glossary. I picked everything up from context. That's when I realized none of this was about farming. I'm surprised how much stuck with me, despite some concepts being legit alien to me. Agreed. For me, the rhythm wasn't lyrics. It was more like the book was written to a cadence. That's why I had you read it on your spark. The mnemonic lexicon won't work with a hard copy. The what now? An ancient Cree technique. It helps you remember texts that would otherwise be considered... There's no Cree word for stuffy, but essentially that. But all that's packaging. Let's get into the book itself. Uh, Hunter, did you figure out what the bloom and the harvest represent? The bloom represents the range of a fortress. The harvest happens when enemies enter that range. That's one vital part. You're right, the bloom can represent overlapping fields of fire, but it's more than one concept. At the time of the book's writing, the Kree cared most about integrating captured territory while still expanding their empire. Conquered worlds came with people. Rather than treat them as prisoners, the Kree provided them with most benefits enjoyed by Kree citizens. This period is known as the Cultivation. So the Bloom was when they gained full citizenship under their conquerors? No, it's when the world requested it. As long as they could feed themselves with Kree farming techniques and defend their world with Kree defenses, the request was granted with few exceptions. So what's the harvest? As part of the service required by the Empire, Many of these new citizens began the cultivation of freshly conquered worlds. So they were living examples. Show the newly conquered what they could achieve if they went along with the Empire. That's also how vampires work. Carol, I think I pieced together the Kree strategy. Do tell. It's all tied to agriculture. Every soldier knows you can't fight if you can't eat. But they applied this to their expansion. Till the field, sow the seed, pull the weed, reap the crop. It means the Cree wouldn't advance until the territory they took was secure and productive. If your enemy knows how you will act, they can prepare. Certainly, for other spacefaring empires. But most worlds had no idea the Cree existed until the invasion was underway. But the Kree expansion had momentum. They could afford to push harder because their whole weight was behind the advance. Unless a world could push just as hard, it would eventually fall under Kree control. Carol, how was that? Close enough to impress me. The strategy in Volume 32 wasn't perfect, but it worked out for the Kree far more often than it failed. What happened when it failed? That's covered in Volume 33. And that's book love. Steve, you're up next. What's your book? The Mantle of Authority, by General Chester Phillips. Is this the one you keep saying I should read? The very same. Now you have to. It's book club. Before I forget, I asked Logan to join us next time. He said yes? He can read? <laughs> I can't wait to see how this goes. So why choose this book? Volume 30 was way too spicy for this crowd. Go on. I'm kidding. It's relevant to what we're facing today. Hydra, the Lilin, your mom. They seem to have the upper hand all over the world. The Kree never conquered this planet. Neither will my mother. Exactly. Reputation makes you seem bigger than you are. We can hit them anywhere, at any time. You can bet this adds to our own reputation. And that's how we defeat our enemy. As long as we're still standing, they're gonna fall. I hope you enjoy the book I chose. Why do you say that? It's about people who weren't around until after your death. But I'm sure you'll figure out the context. Okay, just between us, Carol's book was extremely weird, right? I learned a thing or two. 
What, how to grow turnips on the moon? That is harsh. I didn't think it was that bad. But interstellar agriculture as a metaphor for planetary conquest, not what I expected. You should be honest with Carol. I'm always honest with Carol. But if I tell her it was a weird book, I'll sound like I don't know much about her adopted culture. And how is that bad? You do not know, so this is the perfect opportunity to ask. Good point. All right, I'll do it. Thanks, Hunter. Good luck. On your way out? I am taking off. Good meeting. some more thoughts on the book you do you must have really liked it actually I didn't connect with it at all that's what I wanted to talk to you about you didn't like it it's more that I didn't have the context but you do and you clearly like the book so so I wanted to see it through your eyes if you don't mind I like that context I don't mind I've worked with Eddie before. He's not that bad. He's not that good either. Okay then. Most of my time at Central is hurry up and wait. Stop by when I'm waiting. We'll talk. I will. Need something, dear? What do you know about the Moon Seals? Presumably forged by the gods themselves. I like to think of a Moon Seal as both a lock and a key. With the right power, wielded by the right person, the energy of the seal is unleashed, creating a conduit to the Elder Gods. And I am that right person. Just another benefit of being descended from the blood. Lucky you, dear. Where did the words of power come from? While I often call them blessings or gifts of the Old Gods, the words of power are actually powerful invocations tuned to the unique energies found in Descendants of the Blood. And Caretaker used the words as well. Of course, dear. Sarah used the words of power on the Abbey Grounds just as you do today. Many of the areas you encounter that seem receptive to these spells are actually the result of Sarah's frequent undertakings. You guys really put the home in home base. This is an impressive setup. I hope the accommodations are better than what my mother provided. Eh, your mother gave me a lot of stuff, but most of it was grief. Uh, thanks again for what you did for me. As if my past wasn't complicated enough, your mother added a fresh pile of regrets. Eddie, you are here because a mutual friend believes in you. And you mean he believes I'm trouble. And he's not entirely wrong. I do not want you at each other's throats. Look, Parker and I have a complicated history, but it's water under the bridge. Oh, well, I guess we're still building that bridge. But we have bigger fish to fry. From the yeah, bridge. But enough about us. Can you trust me after everything that happened? I mean, I kept trying to eat you. You were a different person. I cannot blame you for my mother's control. Oh, that's a relief. Thought it might be weird between us. Wanna hug it out? Sorry, I just made it awkward, didn't I? No more than Peter Parker does. So, now that we've cleared the air, I'm a little worried about the deal we made with the devil. That's the first time I've meant it literally. I agree with you, but Peter made his decision. Our plan was to stop the new breed vampires. Now we can do so with your help. Maybe. 
I can't shake the feeling that he traded the devil we know for the devil we... Well, for another devil we know. How are there so many devils? If the world ends, we shall never know. I'm glad you sound confident. The symbiote and I are on the fence. No offense, but I hear there's a gym here, and I'm itching to check it out. I'm gonna do that, unless you need something else. Sounds good. Have a good workout. I'm around if you need me. Hope you're not sick of hearing me say, I'm sorry, and thank you. Wish we knew how to repay you. I cannot take all the credit. I am just glad your recovery did not twist your head off in the process. Um, was that a possibility? Uh, according to Nico, it is a thing. So, what can we do for you, Hunter? Actually, I have to run. I'm around if you need me. I'm a bit out of sorts. I don't have anything to do at the moment. Am I actually having a bit of downtime? Seems like it. I don't know what to do with myself. If you truly have downtime, then I suggest that you sleep. A good rest can be more powerful than the most potent elixir. I've brewed some pretty powerful elixirs in my time. But I couldn't tell you the last time I got a full eight hours rest. What about you? I was dead for hundreds of years. The most restful time ever. Yes, well... I hope I can get the rest without the dying. I do not think you will have to wait long for some other crisis to appear. Yes, I think you are right. I should cherish this time while I have it. For the moment I will just... be. Not much, but I have managed to locate a few details. Welcome to Tony's Scary Demon Cave. I'm Tony, and how may I assist you today? How does this look? What are we building today? Don't forget to write. This should be useful. will do nicely. Okay. Peter, are you all right? Why? Because one of my ex-nemeses now lives in the same building? Do I not look okay? I'm thinking calming thoughts. What thoughts keep you calm? Eating stacks of my aunt's wheat cakes. Watching baseball with my Uncle Ben. Oh, and picturing myself doing yoga. That's super calming. Imagining yoga relaxes you? Doing actual yoga is exhausting. But thinking about it is like a workout for the mind. See? I'm already looser than that analogy. So you completely forgot that you and Venom are now living in the same building. And now I'm anxious. If it is an issue, we can find him alternative lodging. Perhaps in Limbo? 
No, no. I think this could be a good bonding experience for Eddie and me. Sure, I didn't exactly bond with the symbiote, but you know what I mean. I will take your word for it. Anyway, that's not the only reason I'm on edge. Back in the sewer, Mephisto called me by my name. Is that something I need to worry about? Mephisto tries to get under everyone's skin. Just ignore him. Yeah, you're right. Maybe I'll tinker with my web shooters for a bit. Gotta take my mind off all this. No pain, no gain. Just like you wanted. Where in the hell are you, Blaze? We'll do as you wish. Stay out of trouble. I'm ready when you are. Tony, if he had any material on encryption. Who are we sending on an op? Got some ops ready for. See you soon. Nice shirt. Too bad you had to go. 